in salute to, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Two, uncover. Members and guests, please remain standing with your cap removed and placed over the heart for the POW MIA ceremony, the opening prayer, and the Pledge of Allegiance. <clears throat> so the uh, POW MIA chair ceremony, a POW MIA empty chair is placed at all official meetings of the American Legion as a physical symbol of the thousands of American POW MIAs still unaccounted for from all wars and conflicts involving the United States of America. This is a reminder for all of us to spare no effort to secure the release of any American prisoners from the captivity and repatriate of the remains of those who died bravely in the defense of liberty and a full accounting of those missing. Let us rededicate ourselves for this vital endeavor. <clears throat> Chaplain, if we could please have a prayer. O oh Lord, we come to you for help and light. Grant that we may on this day find your service to find us peace, wisdom, and strength. Grant that we may serve you in spirit and in truth and build our work of, to the good foundation of justice and charity. Be with us at this meeting, be at our side. Give us the grace to think that what is right and guide us and counsel us in the work we do in the, for the good of our comrades everywhere, for our communities, for our state, and our beloved land. This we ask in your name, amen. 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 Please cover. Let us now recite in unison the preamble to the American Legion Constitution. For God and country, we associate ourselves together for the following purposes to uphold and defend the Constitution of the United States of America, to maintain law and order, to foster and perpetuate 100% Americanism to preserve the memories and incidents of our association of all wars, to inculcate a sense of individual obligation to the community, state, and nation, to combat the democracy of all the classes of the masses, to make right the master of might, to promote peace and goodwill on earth, to safeguard and transmit to our territory the principles of justice, freedom, and democracy, to consecrate and sanctify our comradeship by the most mutual helpfulness. Amen. Please be seated. I now declare the George S. Shepherd Post Number 7, Department of Massachusetts, regularly convened. So I'd like to welcome everybody. We have uh, some guests here tonight. Um, first is our speaker, Julie Lovely, from the Wild Hearts Equestrian Postmanship Program. So Julie, if you could come up and let us know about your program. Sure. for having me. I was supposed to speak here the fourth Tuesday of the month in 2020, before the <laughs> pandemic started. <laughs> and then it started, and everything was canceled. So it feels so good to be back here, and I was so excited when Teresa called and said that you wanted me to come back and, and give you a little update on what's going on with Wild Hearts. So thank you so much for having me here. So a lot has changed, actually, since um, I was last here. I think I last spoke, it was maybe 2019. And um, we actually, we didn't run programming, face-to-face -face programming throughout 2020. But when we started back up last year, we actually expanded to another day. So it was really exciting because we had kind of been on the cusp of all of these things and then the pandemic started and we had to sort of pull back a little bit. But then we hit the ground running and we really picked right up where we had left off, which is really exciting and it, it, it speaks to the team that I have uh, working with me too. 
So um, what Wild Hearts Therapeutic Equestrian Program does is work with veterans who are dealing with post-traumatic stress. Um, you don't necessarily have to be um, active duty. You can be a veteran. You can be um, out of the military for years and years, or you could be uh, just home. We work with all different war eras, all different ages, both men and women. And they come to the farm one day a week for two hours, and they learn how to communicate with our horses. We work entirely on the ground, so there's actually no riding involved. Um, working with horses from the ground really allows you to form a relationship with that horse, and that's what this is all about, is building trust, building relationships, and becoming more aware about your internal state your own patterns of behavior, and how they affect your everyday life. Um, and I'll give you some examples of some of the things that have happened during the program that kind of illustrate that point. Um, but before I get into that, um, I just wanted to update everybody who's, who has heard me speak before about some of the changes. One of the exciting things that has happened is we welcomed a new board president, which is a really big step for a small organization like ours. For many, many years, the program was, we were started in 2009, the program had the trifecta, the founder, executive director, and the board president were all the same person, who was me. <laughs> and that's, that's not ideal, because if that one person can't follow through on something for whatever reason, you don't want the whole program to stop. So. Um, me stepping off the board and allowing a, a new board president to take over um, so that I could fill the executive director role was a really big step for this organization. So Travis Partington, who is a Marine veteran, has stepped in as board president and um, he has such a connection to the veteran community and has done so much advocacy for veterans, it was just a really perfect fit for him to become part of our organization. So we're continuing to grow our board. We're actually adding a new board member this Friday, which is very exciting. Um, and then in addition to the board, we actually added another day of programming, and we formed a collaboration with Path to Healing, who Elizabeth is on their board. Um, Carrie Wagner is a licensed mental health counselor, and she offers a variety of different wellness programs, and one of those programs is therapeutic horsemanship. So she brought her veterans to us on Wednesdays, and then um, we also hired her on Fridays to fill in when our social worker couldn't make it. So it was a really great collaboration, and she's able to come to Wild Hearts program, we're able to provide horsemanship for the people who are involved in her program on Wednesdays. Um, so that has been a, a really fantastic relationship that started back in 2019 and then we sort of put everything on hold and then picked it back up in 2021. Um, we've also had some really great volunteers join our program who are bringing horses to the farm to work in our program. Um, we only have two program horses, um, two big program horses, and then we have two miniature horses. Sadly, one of our horses passed away in 2020. Um, so we had three, and now we're down to just two. And they are getting older. Our oldest horse is 26 years old, and he's getting a little grumpier. <laughs> so he is nearing his retirement. So it's really been great to find some volunteers who are first extremely passionate, experienced horse people. These are lifelong horse people that really understand what we're doing. They have such a depth of knowledge and they can bring their horses to the program and allow the participants to work with not only our horses but then also their horses who are different breeds, have different experiences, um, and it just adds so much to our program to have these people and their horses involved. Um, so that's some of the, the new developments that have happened. 
Um, like I said, we, we started back up in person in 2021, and it was like no time had passed. We just hit the ground running and added a lot of really exciting things to uh, what we were already doing. Um, so I wanted to give you some examples of some of the things that have happened in this program. Um, we had a veteran come to us um, who had been home for trying to think how many years, just a few years. And um, he didn't give us any details about you know things that he was struggling with. That is one of the things that we don't require. When someone comes to us, they fill out a very simple application. We only ask them to disclose what they feel comfortable disclosing. They don't have to give us a long history. They don't have to give us formal diagnosis information. Um, it's whatever they want us to know and whatever they feel we need to know in order to keep them safe during the session. Um, so he came to us and you know told us that he was dealing with post-traumatic stress and that was about it. And one of the activities that we do with the horses, this is probably, the program is eight weeks and we probably do this maybe seven weeks in. So this is after they've had an opportunity to really get to know our horses. Um, we do an activity in the round pen where the horse is um, moving around the round pen independent from the person that they're working with. So they're in the ring, the horse is moving around them, there's no lead lines or um, halters, it's completely um, free. And the person in the middle of the ring is using their body language exclusively to communicate with the horse. And so the horse, um, and this is actually, this was my personal horse, the one that passed away. So this really, this meant a lot to see this happen. Um, the horse had moved around the pen a few times and was really looking, like turning an ear and turning an eye towards the person who was working with him. And he was indicating that he wanted to join up with him. He wanted to come in from the outside of the pen and be alongside of him. And once the horse does that, what, you're just you walk the horse will walk you stop the horse walks and stops you back the horse will back with you and Every time the horse would start to walk towards him He would send him off and make him gallop around the paddock or the round pen again and this happened two or three times So I said to him how come every time the horse wants to come in and be with you you send him away and it was like all of a sudden a connection, he made a connection between what was happening in this round pen and what was happening in his life with his relationships. That every time someone tried to get close to him, he would push them away. And so it, it, that is something that would be really difficult for him to realize if he was sitting in a therapist's office talking about it. So working with the horses gives you an opportunity to experience these things in real time and the horse isn't judging him. The horse doesn't, doesn't think anything of this. It's just, all right, he wants me to keep galloping around the pen. And the horse wants to come in and be with him, and then the horse can rest next to him. He wasn't mad at him. He wasn't going to hold it against him. Um, so he got to see this demonstrated to him of what was going on in his life through this interaction with the horse in a non-judgmental way. And it was really powerful for him. One of the things that makes our program very unique is that we have a team that is made up of um, a natural horsemanship trainer, a um, veteran who was part of the program initially as a participant, and then joined our team as a staff member to serve as a veteran mentor, an equine specialist in mental health and learning, which is the certification that I hold, and then we have a, always have a licensed mental health counselor present. So I'm sort of the bridge between the horse person, the, the horse trainer, and the mental health person, the person who specializes in mental health. So I kind of help to make that connection between the work we do with the horse and the mental health component, how it translates into your everyday life. Um, and some programs, they run um, strictly horsemanship. Um, we do feel that it's important to have that mental health provider present at every session because you don't know what's going to be brought up during a session. Um, 
For example, we had a participant come to us and the activity was to ask the horse to lunge. So if you're familiar with horses, you put the horse on the end of a long line and you ask it to move around you in a circle connected by a long lead. And sometimes the horses are a little bit lazy and you have to tap them a little bit with your stick to you know, get them moving. And this participant just couldn't do it. They couldn't tap the horse, even the slightest little tap. And it really, it, the, it was just too overwhelming. And so they were able to talk with our mental health, um, our licensed mental health counselor, because that very act of having to tap the horse with that stick brought up something in that person's past. And so she was able to work through that with our um, health counselor, our mental health counselor, and then be able to come back into the ring and try the activity again. And so you just, you don't know what it's gonna bring up, but we have someone there to talk to if you need it. Sometimes people, they really just find they love horses and they wanna learn more about being with horses. Some people take the things that they learn and they apply them to their everyday lives. And they don't, they like being around horses, but they don't necessarily want to come and work with horses you know, every, every session, um, they just like being there with all of the other people. And it's, it's just a really nice atmosphere for people to come and feel comfortable. And sometimes people will come and they'll just not be into doing the activities that day. They just want to sit and watch. And that's okay, too. Whatever helps people to feel more comfortable um, and to gain some insight into their their own lives and their own relationships. Um, does anyone have any questions before I keep rambling Where are you on? Located? We're in West Bridgewater. Where are you? Um, on West Street. You didn't mention the book club. The book club, yeah, how can I forget the book club? So one of the good things that came out of COVID is that we, we decided to do something online. Um, it is not something I ever would have considered because the, the powerful thing about this program is being at the barn and being with the horses and smelling their horsey smell. <laughs> and uh, so we decided to run an online book club through Zoom and we chose a book that was written by a, a, a horse trainer, an author, who, um, you know, whose training we admired. And it made sense for our program because at the end of every session, I always give everybody a book. So there are some people who have been coming to our program for close to 10 years. And they just, they love it. They love it so much, they just come back every single session. And um, we have one gentleman, he has back problems, so he can't always be out there with the horses, but he'll just come and set up a chair next to the ring and he can just be there at the barn in the sunshine and surrounded by the other veterans and the horses and he loves it. So this particular person probably has a library of books at this point. He's got like 10 books, at least 10 books because we expanded to two sessions a year. So um, at the end of every session I always give everyone a book. So many people already have these books. So we started an online book club through Zoom. It met once, it met once a week. Um, for an hour in the spring of last year and it was so successful we had our whole team on including our um, social worker and it was so successful people looked so forward to it it was just a great way to connect um, it was a great way to kind of deal with the isolation from the pandemic to deal with the winter time and we met we talked about the book Inevitably, conversation you know, takes us someplace else. And again, we had our, our horse trainer, we had our mental health counselor, we showed videos that illustrated some of the points that we were talking about in the book. If the trainer was talking about a particular interaction with a horse, we could show a little clip of something with one of our horses. Um, and it went so well, we decided to do it again. So our book club is actually starting in March and um, it'll run for the four Fridays in March from 10 to 11 in the morning. Last year, we read a book by, by Mark Rashid. He's a horse trainer 
Um, I think he's out in Colorado. And um, this year we're reading um, a book by Buck Brenneman. He's another natural horsemanship trainer whose work we really admire. There's a lot um, about him that we've integrated into our program. So we will be running that again. And then our face-to-face -face program um, will start up the beginning of May. So our program with Path to Healing is the first Wednesday of May, and it runs for eight weeks. Um, Carrie's sessions are shorter. They're four weeks. So if you wanted, you could come for just the first four weeks or just the second four weeks, or you could do the whole eight weeks if you wanted to. Um, and then uh, Wild Hearts program, our program, runs um, Fridays. It starts that first Friday of May and runs for a full eight-week session. We keep it small. We just keep it to six veterans so that um, everybody has plenty of hands-on time with the horses, doesn't feel too chaotic or too busy, and um, you know everybody can really have a nice, relaxed two hours. Yep. Is this the same six veterans for eight weeks on a Friday? Is that what it, it is, yes. Yep. Two. Yes, yeah. Okay. Right. So you would enroll in the whole eight weeks. So, and if, if you can't commit to the whole eight weeks, then um, Carrie has the um, Path to Healing, has the shorter four week sessions that meet on Wednesdays. And so each one of these veterans, you give them each a book, that same book? Yeah, so the, the book club, that's not limited. That's, that meets on, that's in March, and uh -huh. that's online. And we provide the books. That's, the books are free of charge for somebody who joins the book club. Okay. And then the people who come to the in-person sessions, we always give them a book at the end of the session, just as a, a parting gift <laughs> for being part of the program. <laughs> Are you close to the overpass? Yes, we're right, right past the, the overpass. Of so when you go over the overpass coming from Easton, there's um, a house on your right, and we're the next house. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Yeah. yeah. Buy it a thousand times. I know. <laughs> yeah. Well, the the barn is the house is a little closer to the street, and then the yeah. barn is kind of like you know, tucked yeah. back yeah. a little bit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> sure. So you have your six people that sign up. If another veteran doesn't want to actually do the hands-on and just wants to come watch, um, do you allow that? Yeah, yeah. We try to, the, the people who want to participate with the horses, we do try to get people to commit to the full, if they're joining our program on Friday, to so the full eight weeks. Mm -hmm. um, because everything does build on each other, so it's hard to have somebody who's, you know, there and then not there and then might be back again. So if somebody wanted to just come check it out and see and not, you know, actually participate but just see what goes on, we that's great. We love to have people do that. Yeah. Are there any other questions for Julie? Well, Julie always has food there too on Friday. <laughs> we didn't after COVID. <laughs> we did. We used to have food. We always had had coffee cake and coffee and then Last year, because of COVID, we wanted to keep everyone outdoors. So we always used to have our food in the tack room with the coffee maker. Um, and we did meet at 9. Now we start at 10. We meet 10 to 12. We used to meet 9 to 11. So we changed the time 10 to 12. So we figured everybody would have their breakfast before they came. <laughs> so we didn't have food last year. <laughs> and, and like Jubilee had said, there's two miniature horses and then two normal size horses. So if you feel intimidated by being around horses, you can start out with a miniature. I went through a program a couple of times, and I was a little intimidated by being with the normal size horses. So I started out with the smaller ones, the miniatures. And, you know, it took me like five minutes to groom them. Yeah. And then after, after like the second session, Julie was like, no, you're going to get the normal size so It took me like the whole session because like he's moving and he's big. And, and you know, you feel a little intimidated by being around, you know, a no. normal size horse. But um, me being able to do commands with the horse without even saying a word was really neat. I'm like, I got teenagers at home that won't listen to me. But look at this guy. This horse is following me and listening to me, right? So that made me feel good that at least somebody's listening to me, right? 
the, the great thing about horses is because they, um, their survival in the wild depended on their ability to read the intentions of predators, their prey animals, they, and we're predators to horses, so they have to read our intentions. And so they have such finely attuned instincts to be able to read our internal state that you cannot lie to a horse. That was actually the book we read last book club, uh, Horses Never Lie. And they can't because they are, that's how they survived for as many years as they have out in the wild as a, a large <coughs> prey animal that eats grass and has no defenses. So they have to be able to read the intentions of the predators out there, and that's why they're so effective to work with people who have been through trauma, because you sometimes have things going on in the inside that you're not even aware of, and a horse will show you that. A horse will, uh, you can't lie to a horse. You ever watch that uh, series Yellowstone? Or yes, yes, <laughs> I have. There, there, there was a, a girl that tried to ride one and kept throwing her off. Yeah. And then the guy came over and showed her how to just get on. Right. He said it's all about how your attitude is. Right, it's right, awesome. it is. Yeah. 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 I told my wife, I said, that sounds like the hot club. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, like one thing Julia has told us is, like if you go there and you're anxious, the horse can pick it up. Yep. And you know, you can be anxious if you're trying to groom him and he's like all over the place. It's because he's picking up on your anxiety. Yeah. yeah. They yeah. accept you. You. Yeah, exactly. And they, they just meet you where you are. Yeah. They're not judging you. Um, one of our horses, when he gets really nervous, he's very mouthy. He's not going to bite you, but he's just sort of like grabbing your clothes and it's echo. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, so if you're working with this horse and he's like really kind of, you know, trying to kiss you all over, you know that there's something going on. There's something inside um, that you need to address. And so, inevitably so he will calm down once you address what's going on. So if somebody inside. would like to your program how would they sign up so our website um, which is wildheartstherapeutic.org there are applications available on our website and there's all of the information on our website as far as um, dates and times deadlines to apply there's a link to path to healing um, depending on which day works better whether it's Wednesdays or Fridays everything is available on our website the application is very simple, and um, you just submit the application, and then you'll get a, um, a phone call probably from me, um, letting you know that you've received your application and um, just information you need to know prior to the start. We take everyone's applications on a first come, first serve basis. Um, and like I said, we do have people that return to the program time and time again. So we always um, have some spots that are just sort of filled, um, you know, from the beginning. But we always have some spots left over for new participants. And then again, we've opened up Wednesdays as well. So we have always have spots on Wednesdays. So if someone would like to um, help your program, maybe donation or whatnot, is that something they could do online? Absolutely, yeah. So I should mention that our program is entirely free of charge. We don't charge for any of our services which means that we survive solely on donations. So typically we have donations from individuals, organizations like The Post, um, and uh, occasionally we'll get donations through philanthropic organizations like um, you know, grants and things like that. But typically they come from organizations like this and individuals. And um, so if you would like to make a donation, you can go to our website. We have a, a place to donate right there and it we're, right now we're almost entirely volunteer the only two people that are paid are our horsemanship trainer and our mental health counselor they're paid when they do a session but other than that right now everyone is entirely volunteer yep do you get or can you get grants from the federal government to help sustain this program Unfortunately, it's really tough to get money out of the federal government for organizations <laughs> like this. Yeah, typically these types of organizations are funded by private, you know, private individuals and private 
um, philanthropic organizations. It's tough to get money from the from the federal government. How did you get started? So I started the program back in um, 2009, and it was initially therapeutic riding, and that was my background was um, riding, and I had a therapeutic riding instructor certification. And we did focus on children. We were working with children um, who had special needs. So we worked with lots of children that had autism or um, you know, who were dealing with um, a lot of mental health problems like anxiety or depression or they were in the foster care system. And we had a lot of people coming to us that wanted to volunteer in that program because they were dealing with mental health issues. So um, I myself had always wanted to offer another program to deal with mental health, in particular post-traumatic stress, because I have personally dealt with post-traumatic stress. And so I realized how much horses had helped me personally and had hoped to add that type of program. So you, as a small program, you can't be all things to all people. So we decided that it made more sense in the community, given the other types of programs that were out there, to change our focus exclusively to mental health and specifically working with veterans um, and to focus on post-traumatic stress. Especially in this area, you know, we're not North Carolina, we're not Texas, it's not a particularly um, supportive area to be a veteran. It's different than areas that have, you know, big military bases. And so when I talk to other veterans to, to find out, you know, is this something that you think you would be interested in or you would recommend to other veterans, that was the feedback that I was getting. It's like, yeah, something like this is really needed because um, there are big programs out in North Carolina and um, Yelp, Washington, and in Texas, and California, and San Diego. But up here, there was really nothing like that. So it just seemed like that was what is really needed in this community, and we decided to focus exclusively on mental health, specifically veterans and post-traumatic stress. Well, thank you, Julie. Um, it was a wonderful explanation of uh, your program, and uh, we always appreciate coming here and um, sharing with us and I hope that um, members if you'd like to partake of the program to you know sign up go online um, if you need any information on it I can always help you out um, so thank you Julie. thank you so much for having yeah, me thank you. the donation from our post, how can we help you from your own words? So we really, what we're really in need of is people to either join our board of directors or join a committee within our board. So you're not necessarily a voting member of the board, but you could join one of the committees. Um, and we're just sort of starting to form those committees. Um, we don't have paid staff, so the board and the volunteers that work within the board are sort of our pseudo staff until we can grow large enough to actually be able to hire um, people. So that's the best way to help would be to get involved sort of on a board or a volunteer within the board level. Um, it's to help with fundraising, um, help with recruiting volunteers within the program, um, if you have special experience like finance or accounting um, or communications, like to help with our communications and marketing. Um, I have more specific information if you'd like it, um, but that's the best way to get involved would be like to deal with the board and on a sort of a board volunteer level. All right, well, we'll uh, move on. We'd like to uh, get some of our meeting conducted and um, again thank you Julie. Thank you very much. You're welcome. I told my daughter I'd be home in time to say goodnight so <laughs> I should go. <laughs> okay. Okay. Nice meeting you. Thank you Good so see you. much. It's okay. good to see you. Thank you very much. Yeah, nice seeing you. Thank you.